Hi, everybody. Welcome back to ESC Extra. And today we are continuing on with our interviews with Melody Festivalin. Up next, we have got another debutante in the competition, as an artist anyways, in the form of Patrick John. Hi, Patrick. Hi, how are you? I'm very much okay. How are you doing today? I'm very good, thank you. Okay, let's break the ice before we get on with things. Can you okay, name me let's... one fun fact about yourself that not many people know about or you think everyone should know? Oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I've watched so much uh, RuPaul's Drag Race that I'm trying to learn how to do a death drop. That's the one thing. Because right before you called, I was like, practicing my death drop so maybe that's uh before the finale i want to be able to do one uh, oh, you've made you've made a lot of people happy because there's a lot of like uh rupaul's drag race fans on the yeah. eurovision fandom as well so they'll be happy to know that you're also, you're actually a fan <laughs> as well <laughs> oh i'm a huge fan i'm like yeah i watch it every day so yeah. do you have a favorite queen at all angie oh <laughs> You don't like Vanjie? Uh, no, 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 no. I just remembered it's like Vanjie. Oh, Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Vanjie. <laughs> that's Vanjie. the only that's the only reason why I know her is that when she got eliminated <laughs> in her first go and RuPaul can't stop laughing about her exit. Yeah. <laughs> and and then there's just Michelle is just like like trying to set her set RuPaul off every time she mentions the name. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Epic moment. Well, oh, but so, other than that, <laughs> that's good to know. Okay, moving yeah. on. Um, because obviously you're participating in Melody Festival, and I just wanted I to am. ask you first of all, like, um, are you a fan of Eurovision itself? And if so, do you have a favorite yeah. song? Well, you know, I'm a bit biased, but of course, like Euphoria is uh, a legendary moment for us Swedish people. Uh, for sure. And uh, I was actually in Tel Aviv uh, in 2019. And I love the Solby. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, by Mahmoud. Um, that's one of my favorites as well. So yeah, there's a lot of them. I mean, over here in Sweden, we take Eurovision and Melody Festival and very seriously. So I've watched it since I was a kid. So, you know, yeah, I love it. I mean, what else would we be here talking about Eurovision? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I've been. I mean, I've been doing some digging. Um, this isn't uh -oh. the first. This 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 isn't the first time you're you've you've been part of a Eurovision national final. Am I correct? Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, and. I've, yeah. Co correct me if I'm wrong. Is it, is it in 2015? <laughs> yes. That you were part of Noise Generation? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't a part of Noise Generation. And like, the, it wasn't a group thing, but I somehow ended up in the German pre selection for Eurovision. Um, and you know, I was just there to do vocals. You know, he was the artist. He was but he was a DJ, so he didn't sing himself. And they just wanted someone to sing. And they, some in some weird way, I ended up like front stage, like, you know, the camera shot being here. Uh, and that was not what I expected, but it was a lot of fun. But, I, you know, I was so nervous. Uh, it wasn't my best performance. It was my first ever TV gig, you know? So it was very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, it's not something I talk a lot about. <laughs> <laughs> no, because um, I'm going to give a shout out to my colleague, Dominic, because he was the one that found this little fun fact piece for me. He was like, I was I was in that national selection. I didn't even know it was him. And it was like when he yeah. researched it, I was like, oh, he actually competed. Well, he was in the stage where I was watching yeah. it and yeah. he couldn't believe it either. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I kind of just like slid into that competition because I did demo vocals of the song mm -hmm. when 
Joy and Linnea Deb, who are, you know, big writers in Eurovision um, circles, they wrote this song and they, they, they just asked me to kind of sing it so they could send it around and find an artist for it. And then he wanted to keep my vocals on it. So I was okay with that. And then he asked me to do a live performance and I said yes. And then I found out it was uh, the competition, but it was so, you know, it was such a great learning experience. And it was a lot different from the Swedish, you know, pre-selections with rehearsals and other stuff. Like the preparations were not, exactly the same so you know it felt like a, it was very quick and then bam cameras on and do your <laughs> thing and uh, yeah it was nerve-wracking but I learned a lot from it. So do you think your experience from Germany in 2015 kind of helped you now that you're debuting as a solo for artist? Sure. For sure I feel like you know I did not do my best but I survived and uh, I'm usually a perfectionist and I put a lot of pressure on myself. So for sure, I feel like I, you know, I'm more okay now not to be like an amazing success. If that would happen, you know, like if I don't go through or anything, I'm not going to put as much pressure on myself. Uh, and yeah, I think that's going to help me relax and be kind of calmer in the, in the. So situation. it's more about the experience for you rather than the result itself. Yes, without, without for one. sure. Yeah. I mean, this is just a fun circus. So it's just, I'm just flattered to be a part of it. And, you know, regardless what happens, I love my song and I'm going to be proud either way. <laughs> okay. Now let's talk business. Let's talk mellow. Okay. How, how did you become part of the Lucky 28? Who's going to be competing in this year's competition? Well... I wrote a song, I sent it in and they liked it. And that's pretty much it. But I, you know, I've been on the sidelines for a few years. I've done backing vocals. And, and last year I competed as a songwriter for the first time. So I think it has helped to kind of get to know people. Uh, so I think they kind of knew who I was when I sent my song in. Uh, but yeah, they they felt like it was a... It was my year, apparently, and I'm just very thankful for that. Yeah, I actually wanted to move on to that because you were part of the winning songwriting team last year. I was. Um, I just wanted to ask you, what was the motivation to debut now, a year on after winning? And is there a pressure for you? Because obviously you were the winning, you were part of the winning songwriting team last year. Yeah, well, it was such a great experience and that's why I wanted to do it again. Like last year, you know, when I've, I've done backing stuff, it's been, it's been, of course, you've been nervous, but it's not, it's not on me, you know, whatever happens, uh, basically. And uh, competing as a songwriter was a new thing, you know, it was felt like I was even more, you know, I want to get this, I want to get this. Uh and then we, you know, we were lucky and people like they liked what we were trying to prevail uh, and uh, they got the message and we won. And that was such a crazy ride because I did not expect that for my first time entering the competition. But it really made me feel like, oh, my God, I have to do this again. But maybe should I, is this my time to maybe do this as, as an artist because I, I do kind of 50 50 songwriting and my own thing but my dream has always been being on stage um and you know watching melody festival and, and eurovision as a kid i've always wanted to be on that stage so i felt like once i had the song that i felt was perfect it was like no you know no question about it i had to like give it a try at least well, we certainly look forward to seeing you on stage very soon. Uh, moving on about the song, obviously you'll be competing with the song Tears Run Dry. Is there anything you can tell us about the song itself? Um, well, the song is, you know, like a mix of emotions. I feel like I like to write songs where you kind of go on a journey where it's, a bit emotional but then it's also kind of uplifting and hopeful so we're definitely gonna get that vibe 
And yeah, the song is about, you know, holding on to a moment and not being ready to let go just yet, you know. Um, so yeah, I think that can relate to a lot of things in life in general. Um, yeah. Okay, talking about this, more about the song itself, because obviously you can't give away anything as of yet. How would you compare Debut Melody Festival and entry as an artist towards the all of the songs that you've released so far as an artist? I mean, I think it's very much in line with what I do because, you know, one of my, one of my, you know, uh, own demands that if, like, if I'm going to do this competition, I'm going to stay true to myself. Uh, I don't want to compromise my sound too much. Uh, but it's it's like a 2.0 of the other songs it's still like for me at least a good fit for the show like I've, I, I've adjusted the song so it will have these moments that maybe you don't necessarily have in a typical radio or streaming song you know um, so I've I've kind of yeah with my my two colleagues we've kind of like tailor made it into a perfect mellow song for me at least uh, to show who I am because I was going to say you you basically have a couple of people that you always write songs with isn't it you always I think I've seen you quote with Melanie quite a lot as well Herman. yeah Melanie yeah, so, and Herman yeah so is it more like you co-wrote some songs with them and then when you finally got to mellow it was like if I work with them then you know what works for you is basically yeah for sure I mean all like the three of us we have a lot of separate projects as well and we do a lot of different stuff and we work with a lot of different people but we're very close friends and we know that we work well together so you know from time to time it's just nice to kind of come back home to your family sort of and just write with the people who know you the best because then the process is a bit different and they already know what I like and I know what they like. So when I decided like, oh, I want to give this a try writing a song as an artist, I felt like, oh, I had to go to them first, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, we had one day together to write this song and it turned out, you know, it turned out amazing. And I was like, oh, I don't need to book anything else. Like I, I already know that this is my song. It's like having that same like close of knit of people. It's like, it's like, I don't need anyone else. Like I know who I am and I know what my sound is like. So. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's always good with other influences and that's why I still, I work with a lot of other people as well. But for this particular, you know, reason, I felt like I wanted them, you know, we shared the, that journey last year with the mamas and we didn't get to go to Eurovision unfortunately so you know it just felt like it was kind of I, I just had to work with them for this yeah so it felt natural basically yes exactly yeah. okay moving on to the staging itself um how are the preparations for that going it's going well. Um, last week was full of rehearsals. And, and this week, I'm just, you know, rehearsing myself, what I can do and the things that I can control and just getting ready in the mindset for, for next week when we're starting rehearsals in the arena and, you know, preparations. And yeah, so it's a lot of that. Me just singing the song like a billion times every day <laughs> to kind of have it like, in the bone marrow, um, you know. Yeah, well, and also now that we're having this interview, it's actually been announced that you're performing sixth on the running order. What was your yes. reaction when you found out you're more towards the end of the show? Uh, it feels good. Um, it's always, you know, you try to like analyze which order is, you know, the, the best one to get. But uh, it, that didn't make me any wiser. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be there. Like I, I get to 
watch amazing artists perform before me and then towards the end I get to do my stuff and then daughter which is amazing will finish the show so I, I feel good about it yeah okay well seeing as you're debuting on the contest this year um and obviously that you've had the mellow experience even not as a main artist things will be different this year because of the current situation. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you what it, feel, what, what it feels like now that you finally got your shot as a debut artist, there's no audience on the actual shows. Um, how did, you, how did mean, you react? It was understandable, you know, it made sense. So I wasn't shocked. Um, but, you know, there's always like this extra special energy with the audience there and you know that's what i love about doing live you know the interaction with the audience but you know this is my first time there's a lot of pressure i feel and there's gonna be a lot of nerves so you know if i'm gonna see something good about it i think it's it's that you know like it's not gonna be as nerve-wracking because this is now it's i've got a camera to focus on and not you know thousands of people as well um so I think that will be helpful but you know of course I would have loved to have a full audience but I think everyone would have yeah oh. well anyways with Mel with Melo we can't wait to see your performance I think you're one of the ones that we should look out for for that one oh, that's thank for you. sure that Just means a, a lot you're welcome. Um, okay, moving on for a couple of questions. Um, yeah. Fans, obviously fans know you from co-writing The Mamas' Entry last year. And mm -hmm. you've also done some songwriting and not just in Melody Festival, and you were also in Dance Melody Grand Prix last year as a songwriter. Yeah. Out of all the entries that you've been a songwriter on, Melo and Dance and everything else, do you have a favorite out of the ones that you've been part of the songwriting team of, if that makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Well, I think I gotta say move, you know, like that. And it kind of proves, you know, the, that it went so well that there was something special about that song. Uh, and, you know, if I, I, we felt something special in the studio when we wrote it. And then, you know, a week later we, we played it to the mamas and they loved, loved the song and they recorded it and there was this magic again and you know and then we went on to the pre-selection and the magic appeared and the finale you know so the whole journey was such a crazy ride uh, and probably the biggest thing I've done in my career so I think that's definitely it has to be my my favorite moment yeah I mean like out of all the artists they call, I, I'm actually intrigued about the mamas because you co-wrote Move, and then you've also written a couple of songs with them after Move as well, which mm -hmm. let's just say that um, it's been on my playlist for quite some time as well. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> so I can't wait for that. Um, in the lead up to your participation, you actually released your EP as well as a consequence. Yes, that's yeah. true. Um, yeah. What was the experience like writing about that, uh, writing that? EP itself and will we get more music from Patrick Jean after Melody Festival in this year? <laughs> it's been a, it, it was a, a really fun experience. I think last year was, it was a weird year for everyone, but it also gave me time to kind of just focus on my artist project and, you know, experimenting with sounds and, and doing all that just alone here. And then, you know, going into a studio with friends and, and uh, just having fun and there was no pressure of like there has to be music coming out because you know you can't play live anyways so I definitely felt like with this EP I just did what I wanted to do and what I love um, and yeah there's a lot of songs left from this period that I want to release so I definitely have some singles planned for uh, after Mellow and you know maybe by the end of the year there'll be a whole album who knows there's a yeah I'm just like very inspired at the moment so that's what we like to hear we like we like um, as much as we love EPs we we prefer albums <laughs> yes I do too actually yeah but anyways 
we just wanted to wish you the best of luck. Uh, is there Thank anything you, so you is there anything you want to say to the viewers who's watching us right now? Uh, well, I just hope you enjoy my performance. I'm gonna do my best to, you know, entertain and just to spread some love and uh, hopefully make people kind of reflect on, you know, norms and expectations and stuff like that with my act. So I hope you like it and, you know, I'm so thankful for the support so far and yeah, all nothing but love for you. Okay, well, Patrick, I just want to say Tak Samika, Uk Likatil Emoji Festivalin. Tak. Bye bye. I was going to say thank you very much, guys, for watching. If you liked the interview, then please press the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to push the notification bell to be one of the first people to find out when we got a new video. Also, don't forget to follow us at ESC Extra on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But for now, Tak Samika, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.